had some major storms yesterday. You remember that southern area we were talking about near Del Rio? We had those backed easterly winds that we were showing. That really came together. And this is a radar shot from about 8 p.m. last night showing a storm moving up US 90 towards the San Antonio area. And that's it right there. You can see that hook echo, the big HP structure. And this thing was rotating like a top, 120 knots shear across about six or seven miles. But the rotation was not quite condensed enough to produce a tornado. Here we see the development of that area. There's San Antonio, there's Del Rio, and you can see the southeasterly flow, which backs as the day goes on. So running that forward, you can see those storms just west of Del Rio out there in Mexico. Those rapidly come together around midday. Big anvils spreading outward, and there's that severe thunderstorm, good overshoots heading into the San Antonio area. Here's that storm complex again around 2 p.m., and you'll see that move down the US-90 corridor through initially Del Rio, then Uvalde, Hondo, and San Antonio. And that's quite a storm. I don't think I've ever seen anything that severe south of Austin at any point that I can recall. And here comes that other storm blowing through about 1 in the morning. That had kind of a bow echo structure. Incredibly, not much in the way of damage with that. There were reports of an RV flipped, several trees uprooted, fences blown down, and uh, of course, numerous reports of two to three inch hail posted on social media. We also had this other rogue storm come together that moved through Norman and produced a lot of damage. You're going to see that right there. That develops around the Hobart, Oklahoma area moves up through Anadarko, and there it goes rolling into Norman. No tornadoes from that, but there was extensive damage. Windows out, one and a half inch hail near Wellington. There was a report of an injury from hail at Brahms on I-35 at Robinson. Lots of broken car windows, two to three inch hail, and skylights broken by two and three quarter inch hail on the northeast side of Norman. And if that wasn't enough fun, we had this storm rolling across northern Tarrant County, north of Fort Worth, producing tornado warnings. However, most of the damage with this was one to two inch hail in a wide swath from Eagle Mountain across Keller and on up into the Grapevine area. So that brings us to today. The severe threats have minimized substantially. We're down to a marginal risk from East Texas all the way up to Pennsylvania and New York. And you can see most of the convection on this radar mosaic is rather disorganized and has linear structures. A quick check of that surface map shows that weather system that has been slowly glacially moving through the southern Rockies, now emerging out into the Austin, San Antonio area. And we are getting that cold air advection in the wake of that. North winds, temperatures in the 60s. However, out to the west, temperatures are recovering fast. Up to 82 at Phoenix there, that's about 12 degrees warmer than at this time yesterday. Still 70s out around Nogales, Tucson, and Safford, but 80 out there at Las Vegas, and we're expecting some very hot temperatures in this area this weekend, especially up here in the Great Basin region. Looking up to the north, mild conditions on the northern plains. We have this lee side, somewhat bare clinic low in Alberta, and up in Nunavut Northwest Territories, it is warming up quite a bit. The sub-zero temperatures are gone, and we're starting to see some above-freezing temperatures here and there at Iqaluit and the Mackenzie River Valley, 30s in that region, and 40s starting to show up in Yukon and Alaska once again. With prospects for severe weather diminishing, this is a good time to take a look at the upper-level patterns. 
Starting out this morning, low pressure area aloft in the mid-levels there near El Paso, but it is just not moving out very much. You can see it trying to dig in there around Chihuahua, Mexico. So that's going to keep things kind of unsettled in Texas and help bring up some of that tropical moisture into the state. North of that, we've got ridging. So that upper level low really digging in there. And underneath the ridging in this area, that's where the heat is going to be increasing. So it's going to be a hot day Saturday in that region. A couple little waves moving through on the west coast to break that up. Meanwhile, it looks like the upper level low in Texas finally ejects eastward. So precip chances will be going up again over the weekend. And then we've got this other wave moving into the west coast around Sunday. That's going to moderate the pattern a little bit. Still a little bit of an upper level vortex there moving through the central Rockies for Monday and Tuesday. And then we get into more of a zonal flow. Looks a little bit more progressive. You can see this new ridge there making progress towards the east. A new trough moving through the Pacific Northwest late next week. And of course, we have to take a look at the precipitable water. Obviously, quite a bit of moisture across Texas. And that will remain in place with that upper level low just to the west. And we see two-inch precipitable waters flowing up into Austin, Lufkin, Houston, San Antonio. So that will keep the precip chances up. And finally, things kick eastward with the ejection of that low to the east. Still looks like some cyclogenesis there in Oklahoma along this front that's going to be moving south at the beginning of next week. This is going to be a new chunk of cold air coming south, so things should be kind of mild throughout much of next week. Looks like maybe a few chances of severe weather coming together. There's the famous Tim Marshall saying, when it's May, you chase. So I think there could be some severe weather prospects there in Texas and Oklahoma for midweek. And going into the rest of the week, into the weekend, about eight or nine days from now, looks like more cold, dry air working southward. And the next chance for weather appearing around the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, 8th and 9th. The Great Plains recharges. Still some progressive waves aloft and cold air outbreaks moving south. And that will interact with some of that somewhat feeble moisture working northward, but still probably enough for some severe weather here and there, especially in Oklahoma and Texas, around the 9th and 10th. Now about those warm temperatures in the Great Basin area, this is the NAM temperature forecast around 3 p.m. Mountain Time on Friday. You can see it's going for 86 there in the Snake River Valley. That's going to be east of uh, Boise, 81 in northern Nevada, 83 around Lovelock. And that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty warm for this time of year. And it does look like maybe by Saturday it could actually be a little bit cooler because I checked out those progs and can see it really dropped there, but still very warm around Wendover down towards the Ogden area. And it appears it'll be due to that front. That looks to be it right there. Moving southeast, this is Friday night into Saturday. You can see the winds turning around to the northwest, blowing right down the valley. So I guess Friday is going to be it. I must have misread one of the forecast discussions talking about Saturday, but it does look like cooler over the weekend in that area. And you can see by Sunday, starting out in the 30s in many places and only creeping up to the 60s in the warmer parts of the Great Basin. A quick check of a Europe. They always feel left out on our show. Still got that slow moving frontal system there in Germany, cold front extending all the way down to France. So that's putting much of the UK and France under cold air advection. Now this air has modified a little bit, so it's not particularly cold, but for late April, yeah, it's a little bit nippy, 40s and low 50s in many places. At this hour, late evening, 48 at uh, London, 52 around the Paris area, 50 at Copenhagen, and down to the south, a little bit warmer, 50s and 60s down in Italy and the Balkans. Now one issue with that frontal system, especially that tail end extending down through Spain, we're going to see a wave developing along the length of that front going into the weekend. 
There it is coming together around Barcelona Friday night. And then that moves up the French coast early Saturday and into the Alps during the day Saturday. There it is. So we're expecting some showery weather in northern Italy, though I'm skeptical that we have the kind of instability to support thunderstorms. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I think 10 minutes is the sweet spot. So we'll leave it there. I appreciate uh, the support from viewers such as Peter Segovia, Trey Thomas, Stephen Dorsett, Kelly Miller, David Moore. All of you, I appreciate the help and support with keeping this program going. So we'll see you all again tomorrow for the Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.